activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. The word judgment in the Bible is very important to understand this. I think I shared this a couple of days ago with, or maybe a couple of weeks ago with, with somebody here. Somebody said, what, you know, what is this idea of judgment? The Bible talks about judge not, you be not judged, that sort of thing. Remember, judgment is, is condemnation. It's not, it's not determining that somebody is acting a wrong way. If you're saying somebody's misbehaving, you're not judging them. What, judging means that you actually pass a condemnation on somebody. So if I judge you, and let's say I, I, I judge Sharon, which is easy to do, would you not agree? And so, you know, I pass judgment on Sharon. That doesn't mean that I'm just saying, well, Sharon behaves this way, so she, you know, she, she's misbehaving or she's not a good Christian. That's not judgment. Judgment is when I condemn her for the things that she does. And I begin to treat her in a different way because of the things that she does. That's judgment. Judgment is condemnation. It's the process of getting from a perspective to an action. And so when the Bible talks about judgment, it says, you know, you, you are uh, you yourself because you, uh, you are judging. In other words, you're passing condemnation on other people because of the way that, um, that they act according to what your principles are. And he said, what he's saying is people who act these ways, these slanderers, these haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, they're condemning other people who don't act the way they do. It's not that they just disagree with them. There's a big difference. But they are actually condemning them for those things. And so once they've condemned them, they treat them or even bring certain elements into their life. So, um, so therefore you have no excuse, O oh man, every one of you who judges, for in passing judgment, in other words, in bringing condemnation on another, you condemn yourself. Because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God, the condemnation of God, in other words, rightly falls on those who practice such things. Folks, this is written to the church. This isn't written to the world. This is, remember, it's, it's those up in verse 32 that know God's righteous decree. This is written people who know, who know better. And so as God's people, we have a responsibility to know the truth and to hold the truth. And not to say, oh, well, yeah, we know the truth, but boy, they're not following the truth. And so what, how, how does the truth motivate you? How does it motivate your life? I mean, if it isn't motivating your life, then it's not truth, is it? At least not to you. Because you're going to follow whatever you believe to be your truth. In the same way that a, a murderer will murder somebody because they believe that they're justified in doing so, they're following their own truth, you are going to follow whatever you consider to be your truth. And is your truth the word of God, or is your truth your own ways? In all things. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a